Today's tutorial is on Python Slice. My name is Richard Kirshner with the Simply Learn team. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. We'll give a brief definition of slice, and then with something like slicing, you really need to look at the code and see what it's doing. What is slicing in Python? Slicing is the extraction of part of a string, list, or tuple. So you can look at that if we have the word cat and we want to slice out the A in the middle. That would be a slice. If we have a list, names, Frank, Betty, Bid, George, we want to slice out maybe every name that begins with the letter A. So we'd end up with a bid. So you have a list of objects and a tuple is similar to a list except that you can't alter those. Once you have a tuple, that's a locked variable which can then be used to as a key code for other things. The syntax is you have your object, whether it's a string, a list, or a tuple, and you have start, stop, and step, all divided by colons. This is important to note that these are integers, so you can't put a float value in there or you'll get an error, and they can be negative. So if your start is a minus one, then it goes to the end of whatever you're looking at and goes backwards in counting. And same thing with stop, and with step, we're going from the end going backward. And we'll look at all these to show you exactly how they work. It's important to note that whatever you're doing, these have to be integers, positive or negative. And so we have an object equals a slice, and then we have our different increments in there. And the object itself that was returned is a variable. So we set that variable. So we're going to go ahead and jump in and look at the code. Whatever Python editor you're using will work fine for this, because this is just a standard Python function. So there's no special modules we're importing. I myself like Jupyter Notebook, and I use it out of the Anaconda. That's just nice because it creates what they call a virtual environment, meaning that whatever I add into that environment or take out isn't going to affect the rest of my computer until I'm ready to install it on the main computer. It keeps everything separate, and I can test out my different modules. PyCharm is another wonderful one. Again, that has a an virtual environment. For regular Python editing, I also use Notepad++, and there's a number of other editors out there, so any editor will work. So here I am in my Anaconda Navigator, and you can see that the Anaconda actually creates a virtual environment for all kinds of different things, not just Python, which is nice because sometimes I jump back and forth with RStudio or some other package. And we'll go ahead and launch our Jupyter, and Jupyter will open up in whatever uh, browser you have set for your main browser. And since I have Python, I believe it's 3.6 on this particular one, I can go over here to the right where it says New, and we'll do a new Python 3. So this is done in Python 3.6. 3.7 is out at this time, although it doesn't work with a couple of other modules I use. I stick with the 3.6. And the three things that uh, we're going to look at, if you remember correctly, is a list. We made one here. We're not going to show the tuple because it's identical to the list as far as its functionality. But usually when you see a tuple, there we go, instead of squared brackets, we put the curved brackets on there to denote it's a tuple. I could have also done it like this. Instead of uh, uh, creating a tuple this way, I could have just as easily we'll call this tuple 0 equals a tuple of list. So this is now a tuple. And if I print these out, I can print out our list. I can print out either tuple or tuple zero, it doesn't matter. And you'll see how it designates them the same way we designated it. These are square brackets let you know that this is an array or list. And by the way, array is one of those terms you'll hear a lot. They call it a list in Python, but sometimes people call this an array because it's an array of values. The difference is, is that I can go into an array and I can change the 4 to a uh, 3 or something like that, or maybe make the 4 a 14 in the array without changing any other part of the array. With the tuple, I have to rewrite the whole tuple. It's locked in there. I can't just look at position at the one at the beginning and change that to a zero. I would have to create a whole new tuple. And this is done because if you're using it as a key code for something or as an ID, you don't want it to be able to manipulate it. You want it to be locked in. And that's why you have a tuple versus a list. And then, of course, we have our string. And we'll look at strings in just a minute, too. We will be covering that because they look a little different when you're playing with them. Welcome to Simply Learn. There we go. So this is our string. And then, of course, I can come down here and print S. And when we run this, you'll see that I have Welcome to Simply Learn. Uh, so these are our basic three different objects we are working with when we split it. And we're going to show you the list first, and we can go ahead and print. We'll take our list, and we're going to do our first slice. And this slice, we're only going to look at a single individual object on here. And it's important to remember that whatever you're looking at, it always begins with zero. So if I wanted to print the first character, this is this one right here, where we have the square brackets, because that's our list. 
and I want to print just the very first character. It always starts with spot zero. So we're going to start with zero. And I'm going to run this. And of course, I get one because that's in the spot zero. And we can also do, oh, let's keep it here and add it in here. Print list. And if we count it, we can go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And so we know that spot 9 is at the end of the list. And let's uh, just do 0 of the list. That way you can remember it. And this is 9 of the list. So we're going to print what we're actually looking at here. Let's go run. And of course, for uh, 0, we'll make it even a little fancier so it says equal. There we go. Uh, so at spot 0, we get 1. Spot 9, we get 10. We can, of course, change this. And we can do right in the middle there, we could do spot 5. And you can see how you can start to reference any one of these. Um, and so five, spot 5 is actually equal to 6, because 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, one of the problems with this is then if I wanted to do the last one in the row, I could create this really lengthy code of list. The one last thing you have to do, let's go ahead and run this. This is interesting. It gives me an error. Why does it give me an error? Because it's out of range. Well, the length of the list is 10, but the last place is 9. So I wouldn't do this in regular coding and I'm going to show you how to do it properly here in just a second but this is pulling the last element off the list and then you add minus one because it's um, like I said it's increments at zero so zero to nine even though there's ten elements and we run it and there's our ten we can do this very simply by counting backward and we just count backwards by minus one and if we run this I still get the same answer ten and by the way if you just list a variable in the Jupyter Notebook, list the last one you show on the line will print. So this is the same as uh, putting a print statement in front of it. There we go. We'll just do that. So this is another way to do the last one. Instead of having to look up and figure out what the last element is, you can do minus 1. You can also do minus 2 and so on. So you can go backwards on each of the elements. And so you can see how that negative value, and let's just put it back up here so that we have it with all the other ones. Let's do uh, minus 3. There we go. So let's cut this one out from the bottom and run it. And then you can see minus 3 equals 8 coming in from the other side. So if this is our basic slice with a single number in here, whether it's positive or negative integer, what happens when we want to do two of these? And so let's go ahead and do something similar. I'm going to steal this print statement up here. And instead of 0, we're going to go 0, 2, 3. I'm going to put two values in here. So here's our two values. And I'm just going to copy and paste this over here so we can see what that looks like. And we'll run this. And so when we do colon in the middle, we do just the first two values. This is going to go ahead and create a slice of this list, and it's going to be 1, 2, 3. So we start at position 0. Remember position 0 equals 1 here, and then position 1 equals 2, and so on to uh, position 2. And notice that it doesn't print position 3. So it does up to this one. So if we have 0 to 3, it is um, uh, 0, 1, 2. That's the actual positions it pulls. And the values for those are 1, 2, 3. And this allows us also to take a, um, we could also just as easily do instead of 3, we can put position 4, uh, let's do 3 to 9. There we go. And I'll copy this over so it matches our print statement. And let's run that. And you can see right here when I do 3 to 9, I get 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And let's go ahead and take this all the way to 10. Now remember, it doesn't include the last one, so we won't get an error. I can run this, and then I get 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And what happens when I do 11? Hopefully you've already guessed it. It's going to give me an error. It didn't. Well, why didn't it? Well, it says if this is bigger than the end, we're not going to throw an error. We're just going to go to the end. We'll go back one. Let's say, uh, let's go ahead and keep this as 10, just because I want it to go to the end. We can also do both the beginning and the end. If you remember the beginning, 0, I could just as easily do this as minus 1, which is also the end point. So there's our negative. We'll go ahead and run that. Oops, I forgot to also switch it on the print statement. Keep it nice and uniform. There we go. So we'll go ahead and run that. And you can see that from the minus 1, it's coming in minus 1 here. So we do need to change this. And it gives me an empty set. Well, that didn't work. So how do you know if you're going to the end? Well, let's take a look at this. Let's go back up here where I have a single digit, and we do minus 1 into this place, and I run this. And this, of course, if you do minus 1, fix my print, you can see minus 1 equals 10 if it's in the first spot. Now, remember, it doesn't include whatever digit this is. So when I do this as minus 1, how do I find the very last digit of this? This is simply done by leaving this blank. 
So when I leave this blank, it goes all the way to the end. And this is the same. I could easily, just as easily do uh, 11, 12, 13, 14. We'll also go to the end, whatever is over the top, or I can just leave it blank and I will get the full array here, all the way up to 10 on the right hand side. We fix our print statement so it all matches here. There we go. And finally, we can also, let me just grab, doesn't matter which one I grab up here. What happens when I do minus 3, minus 1? So we're counting from the right going left. And we do minus 3 minus 1. We run that. We can see down here 8 is minus 3, 9 is minus 1. And then the last thing we want to do with just two digits involved, the first two values of slicing, is we can do an open set from the beginning, which means starting at 0. It's the same as putting a 0 in there to the end. And so when we do that, from open set from 0 to the end, we run that, and we'll see here in the last one, it prints all of them. So here's our full array again. It just returns a full array by putting two blanks in there. So just a quick rehash before we get into doing steps. We looked at looking up a single value. We can put in just that value. Remember, it starts at 0, and it's the length of the list minus 1. You can just do that as a minus 1 here. Or you could put in length of list minus 1, which is a very lengthy way of computing it. So it's 0 to 9 if you have 10 spaces. That's how you put the pointers to those. And then we looked at slicing out uh, between 0 and 3, 3 to 11. Again, minus 1 points to the 9. It doesn't point to the end. If you want to get to the end, you either have to put a larger value in or just leave it blank, which is what you should do. So it just lets it know it's going to be open-ended. There's reasons to actually use the larger values if you don't want it to any, be any more than 11. So there's reasons not to do that. And remember, this spot, 11, is actually, since it starts at 0, is not included. Place 11, or in the case of this, place 3, is not included in the count. This is 0, 1, 2. And then 3, pointer where 3 points at, is not included. And then you can use negatives to denote counting from the right-hand side going left as opposed from left to right. So this is our first two positions on the slicings, and now we want to get into a step. So let's take a look and see what step looks like. And let's go ahead and print. We'll go ahead and just steal one of these. Let's steal the last one since it has a lot of stuff in it that's the same. You always got to be careful when you copy things down because you might copy something you don't want. Let's do a step two. And so it's going to look just like that. So we have all of the, so the first two spaces denote that we're starting from the very beginning, going to the end, but we're going to do a step of two. And let's see what that looks like. So when I print that out, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We get one, three, five, seven, and nine. So it skips every other one when we do step two. And then we can do the same thing. But instead of 2, remember I said these can all be positive or negative? If we do minus 2, it goes in reverse. So now we're going from right to left, and we get 2, 8, 6, 4, 2. And notice the change up here. We have 10 instead of 9. So this started at 1 and skipped, and this starts at the last position going backwards. And it might be that you needed to start with, uh, you want the same exact numbers, you'd have to then add a minus 1 here to get. And then this is kind of an interesting, because you notice here it starts at 10, because it's counting from the right to the left. What if you wanted the same series we had up here, you'd have to actually come in here and change the value to minus 2. And this is interesting. Intuitively, I look at this and I think minus 1, but you got to remember reading from the right to the left. And so if you want to take the slice and recreate this in 97531, coming from the right to the left, it's going to be reading this value here. So I could change this just as easily to 8 to get the same thing. Let me see if that works. There we go. Also is a minus 2. It's a little less intuitive because this starts at 0. And so it's a minus 2 to actually go back to the 9 position or the 10 position. Again, you can also just put in the number on there. And you can see with the steps how we can reverse it. This is probably the most common use for steps, is we can just reverse the whole thing. And we do that simply by setting this to minus 1 over here. Print statement so it matches. And if I run this, there we go. I get 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So it just reverses our list we have. And it's important to remember that all of these uh, work with our tuple. And if you remember correctly, I called it TPL. I can use any of these commands on there. And so if I wanted to take our tuple and I wanted to uh, reverse it, let me just grab this up here. There we go. We can run this, and you'll see that if I do the tuple, it does the exact same thing as it did to the list. So the tuple and the list are identical when we do slices. Easy to remember, tuple and lists. 
What looks a little different though is when we jump in and do strings. Now they're not really different, they just look different because when we're messing with them we're dealing with words instead of just a list of objects. But it is just a list of characters. So let's create a variable called welcome and we're going to set this equal to welcome to simply learn. How we started off our uh, setup on here. And if we look at welcome to simply learn, these each of these characters is a space. So, oops, I didn't mean to switch those. The capital W is at zero, the E, and so if I do print, I'll do welcome, let's just do zero, it prints out W. Why? Because uh, that's the first letter in here is at point zero. We can also do print welcome, just like we did above. I can do 11, oh, I think I counted that right. Let's find out if I did. Oh, good, and I actually didn't count that. They did in the back. So here we have position 11 on. So we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Begins with the S, and we go all the way to the end. So we have print welcome 11 on. It's going to print simply learn. And, of course, if you're in a very strange mood, we could do welcome. And if you remember from above, uh, we're going to leave the first two empty, minus 1. So we're going to do a step minus 1. And if you guessed it, we're going to print it in reverse order. Okay, welcome to Simply Learn in Reverse. Now, before we continue on with strings, we want to take one small detour here and look at the slice object. And I'll call it my slice equals slice. That's the actual terminology. And let's see what this does. This is actually a really cool feature. And I'm going to go ahead and put the values in a 152. And just so we can remember, let's reprint our list we had from above, although it shouldn't be that hard to forget. And then I want to print our list. Here's our square brackets. But instead of putting the values in there, I'm going to put my slice in there. And let's go ahead and run that. And you should see, here's our full list. And then our slice said 1, 5, and 2. So it's going to go from 1 to 5, or in this case, that means 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to skip 2. So let's see, so if we start at 1, 2, 3, 4, and we're counting by 2s, we end up with 2 and 4. And there we have our slice right there. We can do that with the list. And then, of course, we can also do that with our um, text we have going, our welcome to Simply Learn. And we'll do my slice equals... Uh, here's our slice, and let's grab the values. Um, let's do minus 1, minus 12, minus 1, and then if we print. And since I'm in Jupyter Notebook, this is like one of the cool things I love about Jupyter Notebook, is that if I type it out and just do welcome, it will know to print this. Now, if you're in a different editor, the standard is, of course, to add print on there, which is real simple to do. We can print this out, and we end up with a slice. We're going stepping negative 1. We're going to go back minus 1, which is the end. And we could have just left this blank, by the way. Well, let me see. Simply learn. Yeah, welcome to simply learn. We could have just left that blank because that would have gone. Started from, um, well, minus 1 starts us from the end. We go back minus 12. So there we are with our simply learn. And then, of course, it's in reverse going from right to left. So we've reversed it. So a quick rehash before we look at using a slice in searching for substrings, which is going to be the last section on our slicing. We looked at how it works with a string up here, welcome equals welcome to simply learn, how we can just slice that apart. And just like we did with our list and our tuple, we can use the three different values of plus or minus integers to sort it out. In this case, we did it to print simply learn at the end and then also to print it all backward. And then we looked at using my slice to create a slice. So here's the variable I assigned when it's an actual slice. And then we just insert it in there instead of the actual values. This way, if you're doing certain things, you don't have to always retype that. You can actually have one variable and then change it in that variable, in that slice variable. And then, of course, we went ahead and just showed you how to use my slice with a string. It works the same as it does with a regular list. So what we're going to do is we're now going to write a program to search for a substring within a string using slice function. And let's see what that looks like. And we'll go ahead and start with creating a couple inputs. I'll have S for string, which is uh, input, enter a string. Add a little space there so it looks nice. And if we run, and then sub equals input, enter a substring. We'll just run that and show you what that looks like. Oh, welcome to simply learn, hit enter, and welcome. So I've now assigned S and a substring sub. Now, if this was all I was doing, I would just do S.find sub, and we want to go ahead and just print this s.find sub. Forgot my uh, curve brackets around there. There we go. And this would actually work, and you will see that it comes up. Oops, here we go. I forgot to type something in. Welcome to Simply Learn. And we want to find just Simply Learn. Enter, and I get 11. 
So this is what we're going to do with this using my slice. And this is kind of fun because we're writing a little bit of code here to see, just to kind of see the back end and how this stuff fits together. And some of the things you got to look for when you're writing script. The first one is we can go ahead and create a couple of variables and we'll call this L string, L S T R, of length S. So the length of the string. And then we'll call an L sub equals the length of the sub. And this does nothing but give us the total length of what we're looking at. Let's just go ahead and print that just so you can see we're looking at L string L sub. And let me go ahead and run this. And we'll just keep it simple this time. I'm just going to do um, simply learn and just S. So we have a length of 11. That's how long the word simply learn is. And of course, S is only a length of 1. And so the first thing you'd want to note is that if L sub, the length of the sub, is greater than the string, then we'll do something like print uh, error, invalid substring, exit. So we know that this is invalid. So, you know, looking for exceptions or base rules is always important in any of our script. Now, again, for this particular example, I would just do s.find the sub and just find our sub in there. So we can test this out. And if we do, uh, let's just do simply learn, enter, and let's go welcome to, I just typed it, but that's okay. Simply learn. It's going to say invalid substring. Why? Because it's too long. Oops, it might exited the kernel. Not a problem on there. That's because we're in Jupyter Notebook and the exit exits the code and then it restarts the kernel. If you're not familiar with kernels, the kernel is what we're running in. That is the actual script runs in this kernel. That's the code executing. Um, so we can restart and clear output. Restart and run all clears the kernel and re runs all your code. That's part of Jupyter Notebook, the fact that we're in a separate environment. This isn't the actual computer running it, but the but a kernel that's running it, what they call kernel. And then we want to go ahead and let's set a flag. Flag equals, let's make it true. This is, is right now, if everything goes right, we'll turn the flag to false. If everything looks good, then we know we got the right answer. So we'll do flag equals true on here. And then we want to iterate through different values in our string. We'll use i as a pointer. So this is pointing to different parts of the string. And we're going to do it in a range. We're going to start with 0, so the first position. And we're going to go, and this is, gets a little, oops, let me fix that a little bit. An extra comma there. There we go. We're going to do length of string minus length of the sub plus 1. So what this means is we're going to look at chunk all the way up to the minus the length of the sub of text. We don't need to do the end of it because then we're just going over the end of our string. So it doesn't make sense to test for the last five plus four more. That's what this is. So our length of string minus length of sub plus one. Kind of important there because remember how our range goes. It starts at zero going over. Let's create my slice. We'll create a slice object. And this is going to be extracting every substring of link sub from the string. So we want to create a slice. And this slice is just simply i for, range, for i in range 0. So it starts at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, to i plus l sub. So it's the length of our substring we just did. And that's where that's all coming from. And then we'll create a temp string. And we'll cut this equal to our string. And we're going to break this up by my slice by our object. Now certainly you could do this by just putting these values in here and you could make this compress this down. Python you'd want to do that to make it more readable and less lines of code. The reason to expand it is sometimes you want to do a lot more than just know where the point is where it starts or locate it. You might be looking for other things on here and so by breaking it up maybe nothing comes to mind immediately on the tempest but it might be that we're going to be swapping things in and out so knowing the slice size and the dimensions of the slice may be really important if i want to keep the document the same length so maybe i'm going to be adding spaces in or something to reformat it so there's all kinds of reasons to break it down into this again if you were just going to find the, the sub value in there we already did that print s dot find sub but you might be manipulating it and doing a lot more with it than just finding it so it's kind of fun to walk through the code and so we'll do a simple thing if temp s equals the sub. So if our temp slice equals the sub, then yay, we have it. So we want to reset our flag as equal to false. So our flag is true if we have a problem. No flag, it's all good. And then we want to go ahead and print. And let's do print substring found at position. And we're at position i. This is kind of nice because you could actually have multiple instances. And it's going to print out each instance so you could address each one differently depending on what you're working on. So we set our flag to false. We print our string. And we'll do a simple break. 
the break just interrupts our for i statement on here. So if we didn't want to print all the different locations, it would just print the first one. That's what this break does here. And then if you remember correctly, we raised a flag. And from the beginning, I say the flag is true. So if flag print, and we'll say sub string not found. And let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. This is kind of, well, let me run it first. This is run it once through. And here's our string. Welcome to, we'll just do two. Uh, substring found position 8. And you can see here it matches the print substring and it matches it down here. So let's just take a quick look, breakdown of this before we wrap it up. We showed you how to do a quick find for a string. That's a string function. But then we wanted to do it in slice. And in slice we have our first setup that says, hey, are there any base values that just aren't going to work? It's an invalid string. Print the invalid string if our length of our sub is greater than the length of the string. So you look for logic in there that's going to say, hey, this is a problem. And then we went ahead and set a flag equals to true. So it says, hey, I'm raising a flag here, but we're going to test it out and change it to false. And you could have used 0 and 1. There's all kinds of things you could use on there. And then we did for i in range 0 to the length of the string minus the length sub plus 1. So we're going to iterate through each of the different positions on there. We create our slice. We test our slice. We say, hey, the slice is true. In doing so, we change the flag to false. So when it gets to the flag, it says, oh, we're all good. Don't worry. No flag here. No problem. Keep going. If you're a Star Wars fan, you might be, these are not the droids you're looking for. No, that would be if there was a flag and they were covering it up. That'd be different. But you can see here, flag false. And then we print our answer. And you can replace this with some very complicated code where we're swapping in a new string for the old string. Um, it could come up here and just return a list of the positions. It could return the word before. That might be something important. So maybe you have to go in there and look at substrings and expand it going before this point. There's a lot of things you can do with this. Um, so when you look at this code and you're saying, oh, well, that's just, why don't we just do S find? You might be doing a lot more stuff in here than just finding where that position is. So we've covered a lot today. We covered um, how to slice, list, tuples, and strings, all three of them, with the three different steps, the start, stop, and step and so on. And so we've learned all three of those different setups. We've seen how to apply that to string, list, or tuple. That wraps it up for our Slice tutorial. Again, thank you for joining us here at Simply Learn. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. If you have any questions, feel free to visit us on our website where we have a team willing to help. And you can also post your questions down below in the YouTube video area where it has uh, comments, and we will be monitoring that. Again, thank you for joining us today, and happy learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel, and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.